Yeah, right. Um, so mTOR is a, a complex of proteins that senses certain amino acids. So if you eat a big steak, mTOR will be activated and it will turn on your body's ability to make protein, right? That's what you need. You eat, you eat a steak, you, you make it into amino acids, then you make your own protein. Uh, the problem if you're always eating meat is that your mTOR is always on. And if, you're, if you don't have low levels of mTOR sometimes, then mTOR won't start to clean out your cells. So mTOR is very important for what's called autophagy or autophagy, which is the chewing up of old proteins that accumulate. The best example of a disease that is caused by accumulated crystallized proteins is Alzheimer's disease. But all cells accumulate these old proteins. And uh, so mTOR is very good at, at turning on these deep cleanse, deep cleansing processes. Um, but if you're eating meat every meal, you're not going to turn that on. Uh, and so that's, that's the main thing about mTOR. There's a drug called rapamycin, which is used for transplant rejection. Um, low doses seem to be taken by some people in the hope that that will clean out the cells and give some health and longevity. Um, it looks promising. Uh, rap logs, as they're called, molecules like rapamycin and rapamycin itself have greatly extended the lifespan of mice uh, and worms and yeast. So it's arguably the most potent drug that we have against aging right now. Um, you know, the caveat being it's not perfectly safe. Uh, but that's how, that's how mTOR works. So mTOR and sirtuins and AMPK, they all talk to each other. Uh, we used to fight in the field about whose pathway was more important than the others, and the mTOR group was against the sirtuins. But the reality is that if you tweak this, the mTOR pathway, the sirtuins will change and vice versa. Um, so the sirtuins, there's seven of them. They're found in a variety of places in the cell. There's three in the nucleus. There's three in mitochondria, and there's one floating around in between. And they take care of telomeres. They take care of cell survival, um, repair DNA damage. The list goes on. They even control how, how much um, fat we put on. So they are essential. If you have mice that have more sirtuins, they, they tend to live longer. Um, number six, sirtuin six seems seem to be very effective. But the problem for the sirtuins is that they need this molecule called NAD to work. And as we get older, we have less and less NAD. And uh, if you look at skin of a 50 year old, like, like me, the levels of NAD are now half of what they were when I was 20, uh, assuming I'm an average human being. And uh, so that's scary. That means the sirtuin defenses against diseases and decay are only probably half as active as they used to be. So that's why I take NMN, which has been shown in humans to raise the NAD levels back up to youthful levels. And the hope is that people who do that, uh, myself included, will have the, the defenses that, and the rigor um, of a much younger person. Uh, and we'll see, you know, proof's in the pudding, right? It's a long-term experiment. Um, I've still got hair, I can see perfectly, and my mind is intact. But, uh, you know, if, if I come back in 30 years, you know, and I haven't changed, then something, something good's going on. But it's a long, long experiment. And an N of one, as we call it, is not a clinical trial. So that's why in parallel, I'm doing these very rigorous clinical trials at Harvard University.